we will be discussing yet another issues about the Philippines, the social, political, economic, and cultural issues in the Philippine history, meaning everything that happened in the past and issues about it. So there are actually uh, 35 issues under social, political, economic, and cultural issues, but we will be discussing 20 of them for today. So what are the, so for this video, for today's discussion, I divided it into three parts. So for this first part, we will be discussing corruption in the Philippines. That is like, who doesn't know about that issue in the Philippines? So the social economic issues and concerns. So there are social issues that affect the economic conditions of the people. And therefore these two issues, the social, social and economic are deemed combined. The social economic issues started in the past and still being currently experienced by most Filipinos. So when you say social, social, it pertains to the people, the people of the Philippines. And economic, it talks about the money, the involvement of money. So number one, this is not in order, but these are the socioeconomic issues. And we will discuss, now the first one is corruption in the Philippines. That is, if you say Philippines, Philippine issue, that is the first thing that comes in our mind, the corruption. And then poverty, we are not a wealthy country. There are a lot of us who are poor. And overpopulation, there are a lot of people in the Philippines. Underemployment, no, doesn't have any employment or not employed. Criminality, killings, child abuse, and prostitution. This is the first, these are the topics that we are going to discuss in this first part of uh, video lecture. So corruption. So this illustration is just, it summarizes everything. Okay, corruption in the Philippines. What do you mean by corruption? Corruption is a dishonest or illegal behavior, especially by powerful people, such as government officials or police officers. I know that even in your young age, you're aware of this corruption. It, you can see this in your own locality in the Philippines, nationwide. What are the evidence of corruption? Accounted to billions of money lost, no? Like having a million is already a big deal, but we are talking about billions. We are a poor country, but there are people, the corrupt people who've got billions in their pocket and it should not be for them. So where does it go? It goes from, or they got the money from project anomalies, especially the politicians. They've conducted a project, especially the highways, but um, most of the money are not just, are not being, are not, not directly into the projects, but into their pockets. Procurement process, they can easily get money from kind of mga rail, rail, railroad projects because they get the money from the procurement, like balas or something, and contabora sila sa mga contractors, and yeah, the paid barrel scam, the pork barrel, the ill-gotten wealth. Like they have, they're so wealthy, but we don't know where they get that money. And many forms of corruption. So let us talk about how many billion pesos lost from corruption. There's 21 billion pesos government lost to graft and corruption from scheming contracts entered into by some senators and congressmen in 2001 alone. Imagine that 21 billion pesos, and we cannot even have a million. 35 billion pesos is lost to graft and corruption in government infrastructure projects annually. So there are corrupt, there are some corrupt, corrupt politicians who make um, projects government projects, infrastructure projects, but not all the money that should be into the projects goes to that certain project, but again, into their pockets. Like 21 billion lost every year 
to procurement process according to the Procurement Watch Incorporated. This is a private um, organization that surveys procurement. 21 billion or nearly 20% of the estimated annual budget from pork barrel or procurement budget funds of senators and congressmen are pocketed by corrupt legislators in connivance with with the government officials, contractors, non-existing NGOs. Like they said that it is given to a non-government organization, but they just made it up because it goes into their pocket. And private persons yearly, 21 billion pesos yearly huh it should this should be given this should be if there's no corruption we will not be a poor country just look at this the numbers in ill-gotten wealth or hidden wealth the values of some government official properties and other assets do not commensurate with the salaries and other emoluments they are receiving many of these officials are still uncaught today because See, there are many politicians that they don't have any other sources of income but being, uh, say, congressman. How much does a congressman earn monthly? Let's say 70000 or maybe 100000 But that doesn't, that can't afford uh, a resort. The politician, how can they manage to make such infrastructure? So, na mga question. Asa gika ng kwarta? It's ill gotten wealth. This is a, from the sources from the Presidential Commission on Good Governance or the PCGG has only recovered a total of 85 billion pesos in an ill-gotten wealth since it was created in 1986. In 1986, the famous ill-gotten wealth um, issue was by the Marcoses, the Marcos um, time. And these are the surveys. According to the Political and Economic Risk Consultancy, or PERC, the Philippines ranked, or it ranked Philippines as the most corrupt among 13 nations in Asia in 2007. The survey pulled expatriates in the Philippines who, when asked how big is the problem of corruption in terms of being a feature in influencing the overall business environment, the people, the expatriates in the Philippines gave it 9.4 out of 10. So that's how corrupt in terms of the overall business environment. And Indonesia and Thailand tied for the second most corrupt at 8.03. So, Rabe and Philippines. And according to the Transparency International, it ranked the Philippines as 77 among the 102 countries in terms of fighting graft and corruption in 2002 survey. So, they're not really, they're not really fighting the graft and corruption because if they do we should shouldn't be on this number so still the graft and corruption is rampant in our country it is still not it is a history a problem in the past and still a problem in the present it scored 2.6 in corruption index with 10 as the highest possible score for the country that has no corruption so 10 is for the country who doesn't have any corruption, and we are at 2.6. It's very low. Wala ka pasar. Annual Corruption Perception Index. Philippines is ranked the 85th in 175 countries with a score of 3.8 out of 10 in 2018. So wala ka pasar. So that is about graft and corruption. Now we will go to this issue. Looking at this, they don't have any houses. Say poverty. When you say poverty, it's a state of one who lacks a usual or socially acceptable amount of money or material possessions, or one who cannot buy their own food, doesn't have the necessities, they cannot provide their needs. There are about 32 million Filipinos who are poor in 2002. Imagine that 32 million Filipinos. If only there's no corruption. Looking at the previous PowerPoint, 35 billion ang lost. If wala lang to na wala, everyone can be a millionaire. 26 million Filipinos in 2015 ang under poverty. 
and more than 12 million families are living in extreme poverty, meaning people who lack the means to feed themselves. And let's go to overpopulation. Look at this. This, is, this can be an artwork, but this is an aerial view of Metro Manila. And look at how crowded they are. So another issue is overpopulation. Every year, more than 1 million people is added to the existing population. That's every year. And the current population of the Philippines is 109,423,817 as of Sunday, May 24, 2020, based on World Meter elaboration of the latest United Nations data. Philippines ranked 13 in the list of countries by population. And with the Philippine land area, its population density is 352 per kilometer, square kilometer, or there are 911 people per 1.6 kilometer. That is based on um, land area and number of people. So kung i, i ratio ni mo siya, 1.6 kilometer na ay 911 people. Then the median age population is 24 years old, so about almost about your age. The causes of overpopulation in the Philippines. So what are the causes? False beliefs. This is based on the readings in the Philippine history by Ariola and Parajas. So first reason is the false belief, belief, beliefs and values of many Filipinos, especially among old folks. Children are regarded as gift of God. This is the one teaching of the Catholic Church. Actually, this is not a problem. This is like for me. This is this is true. We are the gift of God. It's just as the main problem is discipline. We don't have the discipline. Second problem is natural birth control rather than artificial birth control is emphasized by the Catholic Church. And the church is against the distribution and use of condoms and other artificial methods of controlling birth. The lack of family planning in the families, especially in rural areas. You see, it's, I think it's education, really education to every Filipino. So, kamo, since you are educated, you know how it is to have a lot of, fam a lot of family members in a family. So, know your priorities and have self-discipline. Know how to do family planning. Then lack of knowledge in the use of contraceptive devices. Teenage pregnancy is on the rise. And this, pornography. Hmm. Can you relate to this? Every young children have access to pornographic materials due to the advancement of social media and other technologies. Easy na kayo ang internet karon. It's just one type. One search and you'll have the website. There's no discipline and idleness of the parents, especially in rural areas. Walay gibuhat, so magama nilang og bata. Lack of recreational facilities and centers in the family or community. So those were the those are the problem and still is like it's not solved yet. What are the consequences of overpopulation? Poverty number one. Oh, there are a lot. If you there are a lot of family members in, in the household, magliso jud o pakaon and supply all the needs. Kidaghang kayo tiyan ba ba nga di pakaon. Graft and cor cor corruption, of course, consequences of overpopulation. Tungod kay dili na makaiskuila, kulang nag education, dali na kayo mauwat sa mga politician. So mas dali po mangorakot. Kaya dali rang mauwat ang mga tao. Criminality, taganang crimes, family discord, away-away, economic crisis, economic imbalance. Wala, dili na maka, dili na, imbalance na, dili na um, balance ang economic, ekonomiya, kaya dagang kayong pamilya. Political instability, unemployment, lack of peace and order. So, know the consequences of overpopulation. You, as the young generation, have self-discipline. Be, be, be a solution and not a problem, I guess. You are 
blessed that you are you have an education and make use of that now let's go to the next problem or issues what can you see in here the ganka ayonga linya they are seeking for there's job hiring so these filipinos are seeking for jobs that's one of the issue in the philippines unemployment and underemployment walay trabaho or walay permanenteng trabaho unemployment there are 69 percent of all filipinos in the philippines had no work or no income and the trade union congress of the philippines the tucp studies show that there's 26.2 percent of college graduates that are 24 years old and below are were unemployed walay trabaho underemployment what do you mean by underemployment underemployment means there's no regular source of income and it's accounted about 5,922,000 or 19.6% of the labor workforce or from uh, were underemployed that is from dole in 2002 Okay, next issue, the crimes in the Philippines. These are the index crimes, murder, homicide, physical injury, car napping, cattle wrestling, robbery, theft, rape. So criminality in the Philippines is one of the issues. Okay, so we'll continue to the fifth issue socioeconomic issues the criminality many crimes are committed every day examples are rape murder so this is existing in the philippines and i know that you're aware of this but let me in this subject let us again have time to know and realize that this is still existing there are there's rape murder kidnapping snatching unlicensed guns ransom theft and robbery sex crimes against children prostitution gambling smuggling abortion counterfeiting and others index crimes the the one that i showed earlier there, these are crimes committed against lives and properties so example what are examples of index crimes here it is said that there were 37,254 index crimes reported to the police in 2000 alone. Is that just in one year? 12,000 firearms used in crimes in 2002, and 10,000 of them were unlicensed. And according to the Manila based publication, they tagged the Philippines as the world's kidnapped capital. World is not. Kalibutan. Ita ang kidnap capital. Imagine that the Filipino Chinese, rich Filipinos and foreigners have been victims of kidnap for ransom gang in the Philippines. Some of the ransom gangs are policemen, military men, active and retired, or AWOL or absence without official leave because they already have the, the skill, the ability. So they are mostly the one doing the ransom kidnap for ransom activities car napping or stealing cars total of 1877 car theft cases were documented by the philippine national police so there are about six cars stolen each day or 185 cars each month related to rape or sex crimes rape incest and acts of lascivious lasciviousness against children there were 5185 sex crimes committed against children in the philippines this figure is increasing daily due to poverty high prices of commodity prostitution pornography lack of moral and spiritual development in the family broken family poor family and school discipline among other causes or factors Teenage pregnancy is also increasing. It is reported that one of 10 teenage is pregnant daily. It becomes a crime when she is impregnated against her will. 
issues. Okay, number six issue. Look at this. Child abuse. Child sexual abuse. It is said that there are 2,147 cases of child abuse who were reported to the DSWD in the first quarter of 2018, more than one fourth of which was a sexual nature. According to Judy Tagiwalo, the social welfare secretary, called for greater vigilance among the public to protect the children in the face of the growing number of child abuse cases in the country. Kahit as na kayo, luoy na kayo mga bata. They're being abused. And the last topic for this video, first part, is this. Prostitution. Despite the fact that prostitution is illegal, there are still women and children who are involved in prostitution. Now, it is still existing, even, even here in Dumaguete, social koana, um, na aray, so uh, online na um, prostitution. 40,000 women working as prostitutes in the country as early as 2000, according to Gabriela. And 60, to, to 10,000 Filipino children are prostitutes. So that is from UNICEF in 2000. The major child prostitution dens are found in National Capital Region, Angela City, Puerto Galera, Davao City, and Cebu City. And Philippines is also a favorite destination of pedoph pedophiles. Pedophiles are um, adult men or women who abuses or use children below 14 years old as their sex objects. So pedophiles from the US, Australia, and other countries in Europe, they come here in the Philippines to abuse or to victimize our children. They're really, really the people that needs to be killed. <laughs> Prostitution, the reason why so much abuse happens is that they are not recognized by the law and the government, according to text, a Baguio-based rights advocate and a member of the Philippine Sex Workers Collective. Government doesn't really prioritize this problem. Women Hookers Organizing for the Rights and Empowerment, or WHORE, is threading the thorny path toward government recognition of this history-old prostitution this has been a problem in the past, and still it is sadly existing up to today. And the this organization, or they are the one that lobby that lobbies towards the government to recognize this problem. Five half million sex workers in the country, three thousand of whom are in Baguio City because Baguio has been one of the top tourist destinations. So there are a lot of prostitutes there. And because of prostitution, abortion also increases in relation to rape, prostitution, teenage pregnancy, and other sex crimes. And there were 400,000 cases of abortion in the Philippines in 2003. So I hope that you're aware of these numbers, of these issues. And it's not just because you do not know, it doesn't exist. Now you know that these issues are existing. So what can you do? What can you do with the issues that we have in the Philippines? What can Juan de la Cruz do to solve the issues that has been existing in the past and up to now? And what will it be in the future if this continues? What can we do? Okay, proceed.